Richards channel, where you always learn a multitude of key concepts to improve your painting skills. Are you ready now? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, uh, so welcome to paint class. We're here in uh, Danbury, North Carolina at uh, my studio at the Arts Place. And uh, today we're going to continue on with this uh, painting. Uh, I, I, I did not say previously, and I, I'm sorry that I didn't, uh, but this photograph was by Deborah Layton, who lives out here at uh, Sugar Valley Airport. And uh, so I saw this on Facebook and I was like, oh, I love that uh, drama that's going on with the light and the plane and so forth. So um, <clears throat> anyway, um, I got to thinking about this uh, when I saw that photograph, how it would be a neat painting because it would really challenge you uh, from those hard and soft edges perspective. So you've got that really gentle, um, uh, you know, soft edges that you see uh, on the lake where there's all the mist and then the mist, uh, you know, obviously going on up into the air and affecting the way that the light, you know, that morning light is coming through uh, those, uh, through the sky itself, it's affected. And even the, you know, the trees are all kind of misted out and so forth. But then you've got these really hard edges with the plane and with the runway and so forth. So um, just thought that would be fun. Um, I, I want to point out that you have a point of interest in, in your painting, whatever, whatever painting you're doing. And in, in this case, it's going to be the airplane in the sense that um, I think your eye will be taken to that most quickly. Um, you know, your eye will drift around to various different things in a composition, but that airplane is such a dramatic difference. Hard edges to, um, to the softness of the sky, um, you know, very dark airplane against a very light sky. Um, so when you have those change-ups like that, your eye gets drawn in. And <clears throat> so, I, I'm not going to talk too much today. I just want to paint mainly so y'all just kind of watch and follow where I'm going with this. But what I want you to watch for is uh, the softness um, that we're doing this background. And I want you to keep this in mind that um, if you have a point of interest, you want your point of interest to be what is basically in focus and what you pay attention to. I mean, that sounds like, well, duh, you know, but it's important as you're painting to keep that in mind because as you're painting, each little thing that you're painting in the painting, you have a tendency to see it totally in focus because that's what you're looking at, right? And then, so, uh, all of this background stuff, you want to paint it in focus as much as you're seeing it focus and and you'll you'll see it perfectly in focus because if you don't you'll get in closer and look and make sure that you're seeing everything and if you're not even sure of what you're seeing you'll make it up because it's a tree and you know what a tree looks like and so be careful about that because what you actually want is to leave it a little out of focus and you want it to be uninteresting and we've spent two weeks painting this background and the last thing that you want to do is spend two weeks painting the painting so that you can make it uninteresting, right? <laughs> you know? And, 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 but, but think about this, that when we pop this runway in and this airplane in, those are the things that we want to be interesting. That's what we want to have hard edges and be impactful. And, uh, and the rest of it's background, right? It's a lovely background, but we want to keep it in that frame of mind that we don't want it to, to capture our attention too much or it's going to take away from the actual point of interest. So I'm just going to paint. I might talk a little bit as I paint, but 
um, mainly in just one paint. So um, this area in here that is misted out, I want to come in and create that mist a little stronger. Um, so we're going to use mainly white. I want it neutral. White tends to be neutral. I'm going to give it a little bit of light, adding some yellow in there. It's a little too much. I'm just going to put some more white here and drag a little less yellow into it. And then I'm going to take a little bit of this purple and bring it in to neutralize it. I do want it to be neutral. I don't want it to have a sharpness to it. And last week y'all saw me use my fingers a lot with this misty stuff and I'm just going to do that again a little bit. So I want this edge where the um, sky meets the tree line to be ever so difficult to see where the one begins and the other ends. But I don't want to take it away. I do want there to be an edge there. But it needs to be just ever so soft. And as it comes down more into the foreground, this mist becomes a little more pronounced, so I'm going a little bit more opaque with it. Not a lot. Some of the edges of this that I'm adding in, I'm softening out, dragging it on down into the lake. You may see this as interesting, but uh, hopefully it's more because you're just watching me do it, not because it's going to end up taking up all of our attention. I'll add a little more of this purple into here as I get down towards the lake itself. I want that mist to feel a little cooler down here closer to the lake. That seems really bright, right? I'm going to rub it until it's not so bright anymore. I have to I'll take a little bit of it off. This subtlety that's going into this. Really subtle. Oops. Put it a little too purple. I think I'm starting to see a mist rising from the water. Yeah, but hopefully that's you know kind of what's going to take place. We want to feel like, um, as with any kind of H2O, that there's some kind of like soft movement that's going on. That went by quick. Let's 
nice and soft. And your paint is really dry. Uh, the paint on the canvas? No. I mean, this it's not a creamy paint that you're using. It seems to be rather dry. Um, yeah, I'm not... Uh, I'm not adding any solvent to it at all. I just added a little bit of French ultramarine blue into that mix. Making it a little cooler. Some of this that I'm doing, somebody asked the question last week about do you see reflection in the water? And, um, you know, you see the reflection some through the mist. And so what you can do is, you know, with reflection you have vertical lines that form, the little verticals that are happening. And I'm using some of this blue, in a, I'm drawing it vertically so that we can just barely see some of that light on the water being dragged out and streaked out and uh, to have a sense of um, the um, <clears throat> reflectiveness on the water even though it's covered in mist. I'm going to take a little bit of this white and add it to this little bit of a reflection that's happening in the mist on the water. I think it may also be just a streak of light hitting the water somehow. And then in the foreground on the water, there's a little bit of reflection that we're seeing a little better. So I'm just adding a little bit of white, dragging it vertically. already had a light blue there. So any of this light, any of this white that gets on top of that is going to also allow some of that blue to show through because I'm, I'm not putting it on thick. I, I'm putting it on dry. Deborah, you talked about it being dry. Um, and putting it on dry. And what's happening is with this kind of cheap cotton canvas, which I don't, I don't, you know, like say you should run out and buy cheap cotton canvases, but if, uh, if that's what you're using, um, take advantage of whatever good stuff there is in that because everything has some kind of good point about it. And the good point about it is, is that the threads are really coarse and so if you add that on lightly, um, it's going to catch the top of the threads and it's going to leave these little lines in there that can be translated in your mind as little bit of ripples in the water. Um, and so you're creating those verticals and those horizontals at the same time that you want to see when you're trying to make water lay flat. That's what you always do to make water lay flat. You, bring, you stretch out the reflections vertically, you go back in and you add little horizontals. Those little horizontals 
keep it from feeling like it's a waterfall. Instead, it's it's a lake. Right. So, okay. Now we can come in and create some of these things that are a little bit more. Um, solid because most of this misty stuff is kind of translucent you know you like see things through the things that are there but when things come into the foreground they got get a lot more solid and evident this is a little bank that kind of sticks out into the water a little bit. And there are some trees. I'm just applying some little limbs there. We'll create some leaves and stuff on that in a little bit here. A little bit of greenishness. Some of this, where the branches are in the foreground, I'm going to lighten it just a little bit. This is a dark dark, but it's a dark dark that has a little bit of a green tint to it. Some of these limbs hang kind of out, but horizontal. Some of them are more the main mast of the tree cluster here. And they're going to go up more vertically. Some of these limbs are thicker, some of them are thinner. You do everything exactly the same, like it all looks like it's all part of the same thing. It's a little boring. Let's uh, put the bank in, then we'll know where we want to attach those trees. green. I mixed yellow and blue together. I got green. And so this is green grass, right? That must be right. What do y'all think? It looks exactly <laughs> like it, doesn't it? Okay, so anytime you're mixing color, think about the value. In other words, how light or how dark is it? This right here is kind of a middle tone. It is not real dark, it is not real light, it is not high chroma like that. So what are we going to do? Neutralize it with red. Exactly, so we're using the color complement to neutralize it, whatever's opposite on the color wheel. I heard that nice little tap. <laughs> Okay, so I'm using that red. That's losing its vibrancy like crazy. Mm -hmm. The more red that I work into it, the less that I would call that high chroma. And this is dull looking as it can be. 
It's also very yellowish compared to the color that I have going on here. So let's uh, let's see what happens if we add some yellow into there. It's a little orangey too. So I'm gonna bring a little more red in. Not just neutralize the green, but actually take it in a little bit of a yellowish, orangeish direction. Notice how I just always swirl some color in. Get a little closer and a little closer to where you're going with this. You're so patient on your color mixing. Yeah, it's important that we get the colors in the right range. Values are more important than color, but um, color's important. Maybe a little bit too light. And we're going to throw in that nice dark gray runway. It looks really dark, doesn't it, that runway? Yeah. But pay close attention to the values of things because um, this dark that I just mixed here, it is way darker than that is. I said it's a gray, but it's, it's a little more of a brownish gray. Mm -hmm. So I'm adding little bits of um, Dark sienna brown into this. And we're going to lighten it just a little more. Now we're starting to get into the right value range. Let's test it. We're going to just put a little bit on there. And boy, oh boy, can you see how it's way too dark still. to be quite a bit browner. So it's a lot more of a warm gray. Still a little warmer. Well, I dumped it right in the middle and that made it turn brown. Got too much. Bring a little bit more of this into it. There we go. Now that's pretty warm. I think it's a little too dark. Now let's try it. Now that looks good.
it's got to be opaque enough. You know, if you have the threads of the canvas showing through, it's probably not opaque enough. You see how sharp this is in the foreground? Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. You want to watch. Even though the foreground is going to be sharp compared to that background, it should not be this sharp. Mm -hmm. This is too much. What's happening? There's still mist in the air between us and that runway. There's just less mist in the air between us and the runway and us and the trees back there. A lot of mist between us and those trees. That's why they soften out. So once this dries, we would want to go back in, soften this even more. Look at that green now that I got that uh, runway in there. That green is obviously too light and way too high chroma. So we'll have to fix that as well. But we can do that all in one swoop with a glazing wash that will go over top of it. So we'll let that go for today. Come back next week, throw these trees in, soften this out, put an airplane in, and we'll be finished. Okay? So that's it. What this one. What yeah. airplane? Any questions? <laughs> yeah. yeah, what airplane? This little area had it. I changed my mind. I'm going to make this tree right here the focal point. <laughs> Don't want to draw that for me. Okay. Uh, anything anybody has on their mind? Happy birthday, Kitty. Thank you. <laughs> it's nice to have birthday. It is. It is. Yeah. yeah. My. Uh, aunt told my dad, she said, that's it, I'm not having any more birthdays. And he said, well, you know what the alternative is. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Do that. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank Thanks. you. Um, I would also uh, cut the tree line off a little more this direction. Right. So I, I would cut the tree line off a little bit more this direction. Mm -hmm. That's going to level that out, mm -hmm. the, the, our view of that across there. Right, because the way that it's it's feeling, it's like it's coming around towards us. Right. Mm -hmm. and, I got um, you. And that's probably going to mean that you're going to go up a little bit higher up this way also with your tree line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, other than that, yeah, that's heading in a good solid direction. Okay. Yeah. Yep, that's what I was looking at. Once she started doing that, I said, well, you can tell from here yours is darker, you know, the background here, and, and yeah. the mist will show up a lot better. Yeah, um, you, you don't want it to be overly dark, but yeah. um, the mm. darker you can go and it still feel right, mm. um, it, the more that... Uh, this contrast with the light mm -hmm. in the sky mm -hmm. is actually going to feel like it's light, right. you know, like it's bright. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you, you could, even after you get your plane kind of the way that you want it, mm -hmm. you may go in and just lighten a little bit because there's a little correction that has to be kind of covered yeah, up do. here anyway. Mm -hmm. So you may as well cover it with a little bit lighter color of paint. Mm -hmm. um, so that we get that pop of that brightness right, right. Um, right there. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting little um, uh, optical illusion maybe, but, mm -hmm. uh, but there's this aura mm -hmm. in that, uh, in that uh, photo reference where it just seems to just glow brightly right below that plane and a little bit above it even. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting thing. That's what caught my eye about the photograph. It is. It really brings out the plane. Yes. You know, it's just not like sitting there. It's just like, wow, there it is, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I know this means something to the lady that took the photograph, because mm -hmm. this is, there's an airport. Mm -hmm. It's a small, you know, little airport. Um, and then all the people that kind of work 
for or with, therefore, they they are a community together and they all have homes together. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, um, you know, this this kind of says a lot about what Sugar Valley is, is this is this beautiful place mm -hmm. where there's an airport. Right, yeah. right. Well, it's kind of yeah, cool, cool out there, uh -huh. beyond their staff. You know, they're a little community. Yeah. Sharing their world. Sharing the world, yeah. <laughs> Push us home. Mm -hmm. um, again, be careful about how much attention you're drawing to these bushes. I think what I would do, um, I, I like the shadow you just pulled in just here. Um, and you may, if you want to continue to do something like that, uh, continue doing it. But I think I would, at this point, I would move on to putting the plane in. Mm -hmm. The reason is, is because if the plane is like the thing that takes our attention, that point of interest, then I want to see the impact of the plane on the whole painting. Mm -hmm. And that will tell me, am I getting too intense with these trees, or do I need to be more intense with the trees? Okay. What, what do I do? Okay. Yeah. It'll answer that. Okay. Me. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. So... If your um, if your runway <laughs> couldn't think of the right word, so if it starts here and it cuts through this, right? Uh huh. You're gonna leave a little triangle here. Okay. And so it's not too light then. I just need to leave oh, that yeah. more narrow right there. Uh, yeah. Or or just make your runway a little smaller because um, see this is a little bigger in your canvas. Right, right. It, it, it's only about a half an inch larger, but um, that's enough to, you know, yeah. to kind okay. of cause that. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed that video, and I hope you're getting a lot of value out of all of these videos that we're posting on the artist Craig Richards channel. Um, you know, there's all kinds of how-tos. There's the weekly paint class. Uh, and there's occasional outings, like uh, going out in plain air somewhere. We're going to be going down the Yakin River in the spring, uh, going to museums, things like that. I think you'd enjoy those. Um, if you're getting value out of these, then uh, do the, like, subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell. Uh, you have to subscribe in order to be able to hit the notification bell, and that's for you. Um, the reason I'm saying that is so that uh, you know when the next paint class is coming out, so that if you're working on a painting and we're doing it again the next week, that you can follow along with us. And leave us comments, you know, not just for me, but for the students as well. Say, you know, Deb, you did a great painting, Kitty, you did a great painting, or Craig, you did a great demonstration demonstration this week. Um, that builds us up and we want to build you up as well. We want to help you to keep painting and keep growing. You're doing great. Uh, don't tell yourself you're not. Um, you are doing wonderful. Just keep at it and you'll learn and grow each week with us. So happy painting. Okay.